We have done it. Welcome to This Is Private Practice, 4.30 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. Congratulations, high five. You are so close to being done for the week. This is the gorgeous self-talk I've had going on in my head for a little while. I hope everybody is doing extremely well and that if you've had a Friday afternoon like I've had where somebody yelled plot twist and everything changed in an instant, that you've been able to apprehend all of those nasty thoughts that wanted to come out and scramble around in your head. That's what I've been working on this afternoon. I was so grateful this week. I Last week I had learned about a part of my behavior that needed to change. And that was my urgency drivenness that pretty much I have grown this entire business and lived most of my life from a place of urgency. I react to what is urgent. And recognizing that and then even knowing that I could do something about it was life-changing for me. So I spent a week in awareness of it last week and made some intentions at the beginning of this week going, I I'm just not going to operate from a place of urgency anymore. Something you may not all know about me, you might know if you've watched videos before, is that by Wednesdays of most weeks, I am talking about being overwhelmed. I am consistently overcommitted. I consistently get overtired and I consistently live in a place of overwhelm. I work well at planning. I am an awesome planner. I'm just not great at execution. I also notice when I let some of my disciplines go around diary management and don't use the people resources I have to help me manage my time, that it's very easy for me to slip into the old ways I have of saying yes to everything rather than going, maybe I should be saying no. So there's been a couple of instances of no this week, which have felt very uncomfortable in the moment but have left me feeling an incredible sense of relief and gratitude because quite simply there isn't a lot of room to fit much more in. And I've been able to get to Friday morning this week before I started to feel any sense of overwhelm. And I'm not sure why I woke up feeling overwhelmed this morning and it did interrupt my sleep last night because I've worked diligently on a lot of projects that were right what I needed to be working on. But there can creep in this sense of there's not enough time, I'm not going to be good enough, I'm going to let everyone down, and then we just spiral down and down until we are completely overwhelmed and paralysed. So this afternoon, after I'd been out to yoga this morning and then I'd been to see a client, I um, I came back to a phone call and, and some messaging that something that I thought I had a, another week to work on actually is required by Monday. And for me, it's a really big piece of work. I have to create some marketing collateral for a brand new program that we're delivering, obviously, very soon. Hey, Anastasia, Jill Johnson Young, you're awake. So I am incredibly grateful again today that I have this amazing opportunity to present an alternative to rehabilitation for the largest insurer in the state in which I live. I am now grateful that I have an entire weekend <laughs> to work on producing some collateral to help this program get sold internally and externally. My desire to make that perfect wants to kick in. So I actually gave myself permission this afternoon to not work on it at all. Usually my sense of urgency would kick in and go, it's got to be done, it's got to be done, it's got to be done. And I would not sleep all weekend and I would be upset in the tummy and probably trigger a migraine. However, I know that this afternoon was not where my headspace needed to be. Anything to do, oh my God, typing at this time of the week, not good for me. So I am incredibly grateful for not having overwhelm until Friday. Hurrah! I'm incredibly grateful that we have the opportunity to present a brand new program in a brand new way to a group of people who I don't think have been served very well for, very, for a really long time. That's pretty darn awesome. And the other thing I wanted to share, do you know this book? So I'm pretty proud of this book. I've made no bones about that. 
my girlfriend that I went to school with, her name's Kerry, she's beautiful. She's not a health professional, but she sent me a picture this week of her daughter who's holding a copy of it. They as a family decided they wanted to buy a copy of the book because they knew the author, hurrah, but also so there could be some discussion or exploration about possible career choices in health. I had no clue that that was how this book could be used to give people some insight into what it could be like to work as a health professional <laughs> in this day and age and moving forward. So my gratitude meter is way up here and I, I have decided that gratitude is just so much more powerful than, than anything mindset-y that we can spend our time with. I did actually spend quite 12 months, including during the, the, the death of my dad period of my life last year, where I would every day, every morning in my journal, write three things that I'm grateful for. That's it, just three things. And I've got this awesome uh, colleague here in, in where I live who has a gratitude journal in her office where every week everyone in her team is encouraged to write down three things that they're grateful for. So I wanted to encourage us today to think about the things that we are incredibly grateful for. So I'd love for you to be pressing some buttons and typing to me below. Um, <laughs> Jill Johnson Young is staying up tonight because it's late in uh, the Californian state, the state of California right now, to finish a presentation for tomorrow and then she can schedule, spend some time doing some scheduling. Well, that's pretty awesome. And the fact that Anastasia is even here on social media, I'm going to be frigging grateful for that because I don't get to connect with her very long. And anyone who's read my book knows that she's in it. And she is pretty darn amazing. She has grown something incredible from a passion of just wanting to serve people. Anastasia, you do gratitude every morning meetings. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm obviously late to the party here. So I want to make sure that we understand the power of gratitude. Oh, look, we've got Anne all the way from the Philippines today as well. Lovely to see you again. Um, who else? Well, oh, Jill, you're grateful for a coach who absorbs my tough moments and my kiddo who survived a bad accident. Absolutely. And thank you for the shout out about your coach. Um, the tough moments, I, I know what's going to happen when you get through those. So that's how I can help you keep going. And I'm really grateful that your, your daughter has um, come out of that relatively unscathed, although I'm pretty sure she's going to be sore for a little while longer. So gratitude moments, I think that is something that we need to be practicing and being more intentional about. And if you're not, understand what I mean by being great, grat, practicing gratitude, just being grateful, just choosing three things to be grateful for every day. So I know sometimes uh, last year when things felt bleak and hard, uh, I was saying I was grateful for my bed because I had one. I was grateful that I had a roof over my head and I was grateful that my husband was bringing me coffee first thing in the morning. And sometimes it just needed to be that basic. I think we can at times want to be more sophisticated or think that we need to have some great grandioseness around our sense of being grateful. But really when, when push comes to shove, there are days when I'm grateful I can walk because there was a period of time about five years ago where that was questioned. And I'm pretty sure for someone like you, Jill, you went through a major health event where there were some questions about your mobility that were questioned as well. I have a great person in my world who walks just because she can and she'll often do long distance walking. She won't run a marathon because that's physically um, not, not a good idea for her, but she walks because she can. And she walks because she's been in spinal cord injury units where people can't walk. So she chooses to walk because she can. And that is one of the ways she expresses gratitude. So regardless the fact that my week has ended feeling a little bit not in the stomach and churny, it's because there's an amazing opportunity about to come forth. I need to let go of my perfectionism and my desire to have it perfect and help the people who have asked to be helped, which is, Joe. send us a way we can communicate your program to our clients, to their employers and to their doctors. That's what they're asking for. They're not asking for the most brilliant, amazing, exceptional marketing collateral under the sun. They are asking for a tool to help them with their communication. So that is what I'm going to deliver to them. Oh, 
Gosh. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Go. I will nail it. Thank you, Anastasia. I know we'll nail the delivery. I'm very excited about that. And I'm what what even excites me even more is that I can't deliver this entire program on my own. I, I actually have to rely on my team to be able to help me deliver this program. And it's very quickly getting uh noticed and this is other people who don't even know what it is just saying that purple coal have got a thing happening so whoo that's really cool all right people we have come to the end of our week here in australia oh anastasia okay anyone who's watching this you need to come back and read anastasia's comments because anastasia has a gift of insight and she is writing some of the most powerful comments for me, which I'm not going to get into right now because they will make me emotional and I don't want to do that to you on a Friday afternoon. Thank you, Anastasia, for reminding me of why I'm doing what I'm doing. For the rest of you, I want you to make sure that as you go into this weekend that you are planning things to replenish you. So on top of me creating a communication tool for some people. I am saying goodbye to my husband who's off to Japan for a week because he's going to go spend some time with his grandbabies. And I'm going to get to see my son on the weekend at his place. Oh! <laughs> so I have got some replenishing things happening for me this weekend. But I'm looking forward to being able to report back on Monday about how my mindset shift around this desire to create the best marketing collateral and turning it into a tool of communication has allowed this process to be quite easy, almost effortless for me. So wishing you all a wonderful weekend. I am looking forward to connecting with you next week. Until then, go and be your awesome self.